SCTV is on the air. SCTV now begins its programming day, starring John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, Harold Ramis, and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen before. With special guest star, Jay Eastwood. This is Harold Ramis speaking for the management of SCTV. The following program contains racial and ethnic material that may offend certain sensitive viewers. However, viewers will note that the deprecating racial and ethnic jokes in no way reflect the attitudes or opinions of the management of this station. We deplore the use of jokes like, how can you tell the bride at a Latvian wedding? Or how many Polish people does it take to screw in a light bulb? Unfortunately, such jokes do exist. I myself am of Polish descent and can attest to the cruelty, hurt, and shame that result from these vicious racial slurs. So please remember, the racial and ethnic attitudes presented in the following program do not represent this station, this network, or the sponsors of this program. And now, the Second City Television Show. Gentlemen. This is Humanities 196. I'm your instructor, Dr. Ernest Bruter. And this morning, I'd like to discuss a topic I believe to be grossly overlooked in today's university curricula, gypsy mythology. <laughs> now, there are those of you who might well ask, well, should one take gypsy mythology seriously? And uh, what is the relevance of gypsy mythology in today's highly technological society? Well, the answer, very simply, to both questions is yes. Now, to prove a point, let's briefly look at the creation of man. According to gypsy mythology, God baked the first men and women in an oven. Some, however, were kept in the oven too long, and they burned, the black race. The second time, God opened the oven door too soon, and the baking was not quite finished. The white race. The third time, the baking was absolutely perfect, and out came the gypsies. <laughs> now, in the same respect, the destruction of man, according to gypsy mythology, will come when one person of every race simultaneously licks the fuzz off an overripe peach. Due <laughs> to a change in programming policy, gypsy, gypsy mythology will not be, be seen taken. tomorrow. They've traveled. You can't argue Maybe you didn't hear me so good. They... I said due to a change in programming policy, <laughs> gypsy mythology will not be seen tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Hey, the girl, I-28, I-28, a G-48, G-48, ah, yacht two, yacht two, hi, and we got a, the big B-7, B-7, let go, guys, the big girl, 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 Lutonian Zygmarinus, hey! Gypsy, 
He joined the Mounties because he loved the uniform. Then they took him out of the uniform and put him on the street. He's Curtis Edgett, plain clothes Mountie. What's happening, man? You cats know where I can score some good weed. I've got plenty of bread, man. No sweat. Undercover agent for the Mounties, Curtis Edgett faces danger every week on SCTV. Who is it? It's the plumber. I'm here to fix your sink. Curtis Edgett. Plain clothes, Monty. Watch for it on SCTV. And now, here's today's exciting chapter of Outpatient. Just a minute, I can't afford it anymore. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> I'll try, honey, but I can't promise you anything. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a hockey player. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I'm a hockey player. It's uh, Lance Rock. How yeah. you doing? Yeah, Wally Wazoo. Wazoo, how do you do? <laughs> what are you guys in here for? Vasectomy. Yep. Vasectomy. Big V. <laughs> I'll tell you, I have no choice yeah. myself. You know, uh, my wife, not? she was uh, using one of them devices, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, oh, those, um, the UFO. No. Uh, no, IOD. IOD, something like uh, that. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, I said, hey, baby, take it out. I'm getting the big B. I'm going to give you a break. That's right. Get, get, get it out. Give him a break. break. That's right. <laughs> give him a break. Give him a break. Give him a break. <laughs> hey. Ooh. I don't believe you guys are clowning around like this. This is a serious operation. Don't you know that? What are you talking about? One We're... slip of the knife and you can just lose your manhood. Hey, where'd you hear that? I read it. Where? A watchtower. Look, let me tell you something. You know inside of you, you have a lot of, you have a lot of tubes? Yeah. Just a network of tubes. Yeah. Well, um, you know when they get a valve and they just pop a valve on one of those tubes, that's all. They just put a little valve on it. Just like getting a valve job. <laughs> <laughs> And that's all there is to it? Yeah. It's that simple? Yeah. Huh. Thanks a lot. It's so simple a dentist could do it. <laughs> dentist. He he he. He 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 he. He 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 I was worried I couldn't do that anymore, you know? Yeah. Hey, 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 sweetheart, where's the doctor? I am the doctor. <laughs> Nurse, who's the next patient, please? Mr. Wazoo? Mr. Hey. Wazoo? Would yeah. you come with me, please? All right. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. hey, hey. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wazoo. Would you stand right there and take your clothes off? All right. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's fine now. Would you turn around and face me? I am facing you. I was swimming all morning. Nevertheless, Mr. Wazoo, that concludes your preliminary examination. Thank you. <laughs> oh, we'll be seeing you again next Thursday. All right, Tiny? Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 
nurse, would you send him the next paper, please? <laughs> Mr. Rock, you may go in now. Mr. Rock, it's two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come now, Mr. Rock, you're not shy, are you? Would you like Mr. McKenzie to go in with you? <laughs> Join us again next week on Outpatient when we take a look at the wide world of proctology. <laughs> Here's Maria and Cruzy with some money-saving tips on how to stretch your grocery dollar. Hey, old lady. How many times have you stopped yourself at the checkout counter and asked yourself, why am I paying so much for this food? Well, there are many ways to save money and eat them. And today we're going to talk about easy, economical Amish food. Here's a handy little recipe for Amish food that you're bound to enjoy. Especially if your food budget is as thin as your waist ought to be. <laughs> First, take one nylon stocking, any color, pull it over your head. Good, beautiful. Then take 2,500 pounds of automobile and drive up behind a wagon of Amish people on their way from the market. Stop their wagon by cutting it off with your car. Now, take one six shot revolver or a pistol or anything and about a couple bullets brandish the revolver in your white hand and order the Amish to load their food into your car now drive away as fast as you can in your car sounds simple Psst. it should because the Amish they never fight back this recipe serves a family of four for about three weeks ah beautiful His heart's beating like a rabbit, Doctor. 102 beats per minute. Thanks, Ned. That's just the information I needed to complete my examination. You know, work really looked like a dead end to me until I heard about the exciting new field of stethoscopy. As a stethoscopist, I get to spend my day in clean, modern hospitals working right alongside respected doctors as a vital part of the medical team. And wow, does it pay, what with hospitals charging more and more every day for stethoscopological examinations. And where did I learn to handle a stethoscope? At the North American Stethoscopy Institute. And with their advanced courses, someday I may be a fully licensed stethoscopologist, or do stethoscopological research, or even learn electron stethoscophotographology, analyzing a patient's handwriting with x-ray photos of his heartbeat. Hi, I'm your stethoscopist, Ned Gordon. Hello, my name is Lin Yi Tang, and welcome to SETV's Theatre North America Drama, where we present serious plays for your serious consideration. Now, some of you may be eating, so come on, hurry up! Don't be eating while you watch the show. The show is about to start, so get away from the table. Put that food away, all right? Okay, now are you ready for this? We Canadians, oh, by the way, I'm proud to say I am a Canadian. I got my Canadian citizenship in one hour, because I was in a hurry. Now, everyone in the world should be in a hurry, so hurry up with that food, okay? Now, we Canadians have been searching for identity for years. Yeah, for a long time, we thought it was Australia. <laughs> okay, but we got that straight just in time for the war, so we could all march together. Where Canada finally found its identity. It took a long time, but we put it together in this anthology of plays. It's a small book, huh? So what? Does that mean it's rotten? We beefed it up, yeah. We beefed it up a bit for the show. So now we'd like to present the great Canadian play, the best play Canada has ever done, called You're Gonna Be All Right, You Creep. Leaving home and all, eh? Thank you. Shut up! Will you shut up? Shut the hell up! Oh, look! Today is a special day. Charlie's back from hockey camp. So let's have a little order, all right? Colleen, stop slurping your soup. Hey, what are you doing? Come on. What are you hitting your brother on the head like that for with a spoon? Ah, what's wrong with you, Colleen? You're on those drugs again, aren't you? The drugs and barbiturates. Oh, you junkie. 
Leonard, stop reading at the table. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? For God's sakes, Father, I'm a poet. I mean, it's not just a spur-of-the-moment thing. It's a 24-hour-a-day job. Oh, you and your damn poetry. You make me want to pee. Please don't pick on Leonard. Leonard's my pride and joy. Now, no, is he a pride and joy, Beatrice? You made him like that. You know that. You, you and your molly cuddling, you turned him into a damn pansy. All right, Leo, run for you. He's the only one among us with a sense of occasion. And he's written a little poem on Johnny's homecoming, haven't you, sweetheart? Yes, I have. Why don't you read it for us, honey? Okay. It's called Johnny's Home. Skate, 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 Johnny. Skate down the rink. The hot steel thrashing against the frozen water. Swish! There goes Johnny. He shoots, he scores! One, two, three. A hot trick for Johnny McVee. And now he's home with his family. Well, that was a piece of crap if I ever Oh, come on! It wasn't that way. That's all it was, is it's a did you. <laughs> Johnny, pass the vegetables. Sure. Hey, oh, 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 Rub some brain over this way. Colleen, you know my daughter, you know that. Leonard's my daughter. All right, come on. Shut up and sit down. That's the fact, Leonard is the truth. And you know it. You're not my son. You never were my son. Something wrong with you. I can't quite put my finger on it. Johnny's my son, aren't you, Johnny? He's the only man in this family. He's a hockey-playing fool, aren't you, Johnny? <laughs> He's gonna be another Pat Boutet, aren't you, Johnny? Not quite as good as him, but you'll be all right. I got kicked off the hockey team. <gasps> you what? I didn't go to any practices, so they kicked me off the team. Oh, Why? Because I hate hockey. I've always hated hockey, but you couldn't see that. Well, I'm not listening to you anymore, and I'm not going back to that stupid hockey camp. You son of a bitch. You mean all of Mother's bingo winnings went for your hockey camp and you didn't even go? Shut up, Mother. Well, somebody's got to teach you a lesson, Johnny. Let's shut go. Up. Put him up. No, no, Johnny, Come on, shut I'm up. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, no. oh. oh. Sorry, Leonard, I didn't oh. mean to hit you. Oh. Oh. Johnny, what the hell are you doing with your brother like that? You know he's delicate. You... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, buddy, I need to be there. What do you mean, hit my brother like that? You've got your nerve. Sorry, Father, I didn't mean that. Oh, oh my boys! Oh, hey, boys! Oh, hey, boys! 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 Hey, bo
House of Vegetables. Remember this song? Ah, Tante Mergo. A great big hit from the fabulous 11th century. You know, with Mother Church anglicizing her masses, you won't be able to get those old favorites anymore. And if you tried to buy that in its original manuscript, it would cost you literally millions. But right now, you can get that hit and 10 other big ones just like it in one fantastic album. Golden hits of the 11th century. That's right, all those favorites for just $5.98 on record and $6.98 on tape. And with each album or tape you buy, you receive a one year's guaranteed temporal indulgence. So why not call in today? The number is Ekum Spiri 220. We have priests kneeling at all the booths to take your orders. This evening, inspirational thoughts from Dr. Ernest Bruder. Dr. Bruder. Thank you. What are the 10 most famous laws in the world? Why, the 10 commandments, of course. Laws that were handed down some 5,000 years ago. Has anyone ever seen these commandments? No. Moses supposedly destroyed these tablets when he threw them into a golden calf. So. How were they passed down from generation to generation? I suppose he memorized them or wrote them down on some parchment and gave them to someone. But if so, who? And where is the parchment? For example, where is it actually written, thou shalt not steal? Or thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife? If in fact these laws do not exist, I would love to covet my neighbor's wife. She's a gorgeous woman. But right now it's hands off. Now, according to the gypsies, these laws never existed. They were merely a vicious rumor started by a goat herder in Mesopotamia. Hey! <laughs>